Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In tonight's video, I'm going to be imaging the Wizard Nebula, which is in or near the constellation of Cassiopeia. Uh, so, if you want to see what I capture, then uh, stay tuned. So, uh, I took a look at the uh, forecast uh, this afternoon, and it looked like it was going to be clear. Um, so I've set up the rig that you can see in the background here and uh, hopefully uh, it's going to stay clear although when you look up it's a bit cloudy it looks uh, perfect conditions for uh, a bit of landscape photography but uh, that's not the channel for this but um, yeah hopefully it's going to clear up and uh, we should get a good night's imaging. So here's the uh, setup for tonight um, I've got the Skywatcher Evo Star ATED Pro uh, tonight, which is a doublet reflect refractor, um, which is about 600 millimeters uh, focal length. Um, and then down the back here, I've got the um, a reducer and coma corrector, so it's a 0.85 times reducer. And in here, in the filter drawer, um, I've got the Optolong L Extreme, which is a dual pass narrowband filter, so that's HA and O3. Uh, the camera that I'm using tonight is the ASI uh, 533MC Pro, so it's another one-shot colour camera uh, to make use of this dual-pass narrowband filter. Um, other bits of kit that I've got on here, so I've got the guide scope, uh, a couple of uh, dew heaters on there to make sure it doesn't um, dew up, but I think the temperatures and the humidity at the moment, that's not going to be a problem anyway. Um, and then the actual guide camera itself, which is the 120mm mini. Um, down here attached to the scope as well I've got the ZWO um, EAF so it's an electronic focuser um, so that makes the whole setup process a lot quicker a lot easier um, and almost completely automated. Um, and then another ZWO product up here uh, you've got the ASI um, Air Plus um, with the um, Wi-Fi extender um, and that's controlling everything on this uh, on this rig, including the mount, which finally is the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Um, everything's going through that controller up there, um, and I can control everything with the with the phone, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. So what I'm going to show you now is uh, just using the ASI Air device. Uh, when you first open up the app, you have to uh, make sure you've got the right uh, focal lengths for your main scope and your guide scope and then just select the cameras um, that it's already detected uh, that you want to use for imaging and guiding and then enter the device. Uh, because I've got a uh, an electronic focuser um, you can see here the first image uh, the the star is out of focus and what you need to do for these devices is get it roughly roughly in focus to begin with um, and once it's got a number of stars in the field, then you can tap the autofocus to allow it to continue the focusing routine to get the smallest possible stars. Um, and we'll see that in a second. So you can see here it's getting uh, the stars in focus. There's a bit more of a detailed section coming up in a minute. Um, so once the stars are actually focused, um, just check that you can see the, the stars in the actual um, from the main imaging camera itself and then you can move on to uh, polar alignment um, so no need for special uh, polar scopes or bending down to be able to see what's going on um, you can just use the main imaging camera and what it does is it takes um, an image pointing sort of around well basically towards uh, Polaris plate solves that image and then it rotates the right ascension um, axis round by 60 degrees and once it's done that it then takes another image and from those two images it can then work out how um, in alignment you actually are. Once you're done with that you hit the let go button and that brings you into the main polar alignment routine. Uh, so you have uh, a, an imaging circle at the top there and you've got a yellow circle which indicates uh, where your mount is currently pointed um, and you basically a little bit like Star Wars it seems you just need to get that yellow circle into the middle um, and get it within sort of sub uh, sub one sort of arc second type territory and um, then from there you you know that you're polar aligned uh, so each time you kind of move the um, move the adjustment 
sort of screws on the mount itself um, so moving it left right up and down uh, and then you you basically get it pointing as close to north as as all of this will um, allow you to do and when when you get to the point of uh, being happy with the uh, the polar alignment you'll see that you get a smiley face so once you get that smiley face you can keep going until you get it even finer or you can just accept it um, and then when you hit finish it, it basically gives you a nice little score to say how well you've done compared to other people that are going through this routine as well so I've defeated 47.1 of uh, other ASI Air users um, this next screen is a um, really nice feature that's um, sort of recently been released which is basically your own um, sky guide uh, your own in in device stellarium type app so it's really helpful for um, just seeing what's going on in the night sky um, and also sort of uh, selecting particular targets but the other feature I really like about this is um, because it knows your um, your focal length and your image sensor and all of those things it gives you the accurate um, sort of uh, field of view for planning your images um, and also the correct orientation as well so it's great for previewing and going right okay that's what I want to get uh, so when I was doing this I was struggling to find um, the wizard nebula uh, I'm still learning my way around the night sky and I think I probably will do for years to come I mentioned it was in Cassiopeia but it's actually in uh, Cepheus so uh, once I've I'd located it, I um, could then get the um, the NGC number. <laughs> you can still find them like hunting around for the target here. Uh, get the NGC number, and then I can sort of jump back into uh, the ASI Air tool and just um, find it that way. So uh, a, a lot of flexibility there, which is really quite nice. So uh, here you can see that I've um, gone in and I'm searching for that particular um, target, entering the N NC NGC number. Um, a great feature enhancement would be to um, have the, the non-catalogue names as well. Um, it would be nice to search for those. So ASI or ZWO, if you're listening, um, please put that feature in. That would be great. Um, so I'm already slewing to the target here. You can see that, that blue square is kind of moving across the night sky. Um, and once it's done that, it will um, then plate solve um, until it's exactly on where you've told it to go. Um, so super easy to work this way. Um, I kind of look back and remember on the days of sort of plate solving and trying to get that working initially. Um, this stuff literally just works straight out of the box. So uh, I've got the scope pointing where it needs to now and now just going into creating an imaging plan uh, for my uh, my imaging tonight uh, so go in sort of create a new plan or just for the search for the target first um, just so that at least I've got the details uh, I'm happy with that that, um, that framing so it's just basically saying right that target that's what I'm after and go from there uh, so I've gone through and sort of selected uh, the light frames and then also you've got a number of settings here which is um, verifying that you've got auto guiding on, you've got auto meridian flip, auto calling, so all of those things that you don't need to remember to um, set up and you can see here I'm just setting up a plan name. You can also do some nice things like delaying the start time or delaying or setting an end time as well. Great if you know it's cloudy um, and it's going to clear up later and you can just set it off and uh, go to sleep and not worry about it. Or most of the time not worry about it. So I've set up my image plan now. Um, what I'm doing here is just going through um, getting a guiding set up. So because this is a new scope, um, since my last imaging session using this device, um, I've cleared off the calibration data. Um, and I'm just getting it to recalibrate so um, it's tracking that star um, allowing the scope to move around sort of uh, was it west and south or east and north one of those two um, to sort of see how the guiding is working and make sure that it's calibrated to my particular mount um, to the errors from polar alignment and things like that so again most of this stuff I, I tend to leave it with the defaults um, they work for me, I end up with um, definitely 
sub one arc second in terms of um, error and um, typically it ends up being about 0.6 so now the, uh, the calibration is complete you can now see that the guiding is um, is there um, you've got all of the guide results um, available on screen uh, I think sort of most of the time when it first starts out it's um, it's quite far out and then it, it then settles and gets more accurate um, you can just clear the results in the bottom left as well um, to, to clear any kind of anomaly initially and then you can see how well the guiding is actually operating. So I've kicked off the imaging plan now and it's already set up to autofocus um, for a number of different scenarios so it will be things like um, when you've got a filter wheel which I haven't in this case um, it will autofocus for every different filter which is why I got the autofocuser um, originally uh, discovered that, that each filter focuses differently which is um, a bit of a pain if you want to leave this thing imaging overnight. Um, so each time you uh, say move to a different target all the temperature changes and also uh, you can get it to periodically through the night and also after a meridian flip um, you can just let it go through the focusing routine. I think frustratingly I had some some issues with the uh, connection of the device that it um, didn't capture that whole thing so it's it's basically moving the star out of focus um, capturing the size of the star and then changing um, making incremental adjustments until it gets to the um, smaller star and then carries on the other side and it it knows and remembers of the positions and then goes back a bit so it's slightly out of focus and then smaller increments to make sure it um, gets as sharp a star as possible and to be fair I've been really happy with the results of this and it's a lot easier than trying to do it manually so once that's uh, finished it then goes back to the main screen and starts uh, the image capture which I've set to uh, 300 second images uh, so I hope, I hope you found that helpful in terms of providing a bit of a, an overview of just using the ASI Air device and some of its features so I'll just leave you with a, a nice time lapse of the uh, evening and the final image that I captured.